Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. Hope everyone's doing awesome out there. Well, today's episode, we're gonna be talking about Julian Assange again. Um, actually, again, this is an update on Julian Assange. Uh, current as of uh, 6, 6, 2019. So July, I mean, June 6, 2019. All right, you're probably gonna be watching this on June 7th. So, all right, let's get to it. Well. Um, today I saw on uh, RT that they released a photo of uh, Mr. Julian Assange uh, in in the um, what do you call it? in the um, hospital prison. Now it seemed like somebody snuck in uh, a phone and was able to you know dumb phone or whatever and was able to go in there and uh, take a snap a picture. So. You know, we saw him, uh, he seems very uh, thin. He seems uh, obviously, you know, all messed up. We know he's already been in the hospital for a week. And, you know, again, you know, all this is coming after him being imprisoned for, you know, over nine years in the, in the Ecuadorian embassy. So, you know, as of right now, there's not much of an update. I mean, there are a lot of updates, but when it comes to him per se, it's uh, more like, uh, you know, there's a new picture of him, which is starting to rise a bunch of questions. And um, not, just, uh, not just a new picture of him, but again, you know, we've had people like even Pamela Anderson and a few other people go and uh, visit him and uh, see him in the hospital and all that shit. And um, yeah, he's not doing very well. Now, I re you know, I obviously the reason I'm making this video is because, well, I made a video last week and uh, it was very popular. Obviously, <laughs> there was a lot of new subscribers, a lot of new everybody. And um, you know, it's just because we're talking about a topic seems like nobody wants to talk about. Very few outlets are talking about this. Now, there is some audio. I'm gonna see if I can put a link at the bottom. You know uh, of his lawyer that I've actually found uh, for anyone out there that wants to, to take a look I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play the audio here for fear that it might get taken down or what have you but um, you know Julian Assange right now you know with him being on trial with him uh, you know being treated the way he's being treated you know the reason that why this is so important is because he stands for the first amendment right now whatever the hell happens to him it's gonna happen to the first amendment what do i mean by that you know freedom of speech you know he right he, he is the martyr he is representing the free our, our freedom of speech all of us put together you know right now we're even seeing you know all over the place you know mainstream media you know people from like uh even you know rachel maddow the cnn's of the world cnbc's you name it you know everyone is literally um sh you know for lack of a better term taking a dump you know in their in their pants right now and um it's not everybody it's not everybody because there's a <laughs> there's a few people i mean you know there are a few people out there that are um, you know, straight up, you know, know that they're government agents and working for the government and uh, propagandist, and they're not really scared, you know. They, you know, whatever. They're just part of the machine. But there's tons and tons of people out there um, that are extremely worried. In fact, as of yesterday, here I'm gonna take this street here. Maybe it's a little quieter. So, as of. Uh, a few days ago in Australia, uh, our news reporter that works for ABC, the ABC affiliate out there in Australia, um, she, they, she got her home raided and she got arrested and she got in trouble because uh, she did a report on her mainstream media outlet um, exposing some people, some things. I'm not quite sure what it was, but you know, she's just a regular reporter working for ABC and she, she got arrested a la Julian Assange. And uh, you know, now we're starting to see you know more and more um, of this uh, clamping down on free speech as the days go on in fact now you know remember when the whole thing happened with Julian I mean the, when the whole thing happened with uh, Mr. Alex Jones um, 
remember, I'm not here defending Alex Jones or anything like that, but, you know, there's a lot of people out there that was warning everybody, saying, hey, if we let Alex Jones get in trouble, if we, if we allow him, if we allow them to do this to him, then, then what's going to happen is that they're going to start coming after everybody and we're, gonna we're not going to have any kind of recourse or anything like that. And sure enough, sure enough, that's exactly, uh, you know, what ended up happening. I mean, they, came, they went after Alex Jones and now they're going after everybody. And now they're coming after everybody. So, you know, just be careful out there. And I'm talking about to everyone else that's doing what I'm doing because now I gotta be even more careful. It's funny because my girlfriend the other day, you know, she was literally telling me, you know, she was worried about me and stuff. And I'm like, ah, don't worry. I mean, I'm just a small time uh, YouTuber and I don't, you know, necessarily focus on this stuff all the time. I mean, I kind of do, but it's uh, it's a little different. I don't know. I feel like I'm not like a big uh, influencer or anything like that. And they got bigger fish to fry. But, you know, nowadays you never know. Uh, you just got to be very, very, very careful. But, I mean, you know, we're seeing all kinds of things right now where, you know, I was watching some controversy with some, some YouTuber that's all the way on the left that works for Vox where he just complained about some other YouTuber that was on the right and then all of a sudden like they just made him disappear and things like that so you know made him disappear off of YouTube and shit like that so you know right now you know we're, we're, we're watching the um, you know the first amendment literally erode away and it's, it's a very scary it's very 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 scary I know there's plenty of people out there that are sheeple you know bang, bang. you know they don't they don't think any of this is scary and everything's great and wonderful and all that bullshit but this is, i mean for my me personally this is scary as fuck it's crazy all that shit that's happening right now it really is and um i don't know why more people are not up in arms and seeing this i don't know why there's only such a few people i don't know why you know um when i was i mean seriously when i'm going through the comments section of my julian assange video Man, there was so many people who just came out of the freaking woodwork, literally. And, uh, <laughs> you know, shout out to you guys out there. You know, thinking that Julian Assange is like public enemy number one. Um, you know, at the same time also spinning a bunch of crazy conspiracy theories. Which, by the way, I don't necessarily disagree with some of them. In fact, we're going to talk about them in a few right now. I mean, look, there's some people out there that literally think that you know, everything that's going on with Mr. Julian Assange is all just like a dog and pony show, literally. And that he's fine, actually. You know, the fact is that they dragged him out of there so they can give him medical care, take care of him. And then uh, he can... Uh... Yeah, sorry. Got to scratch my, my shoe there. And, you know, he can continue doing what he wants to do. Or what he needs to do. Meaning that, you know, uh, stand trial... You know, um, and uh, literally not stand trial for um, for the things that he's being accused of at the moment, but literally uh, the complete opposite. Literally to conf nah, not confess. This is the wrong. Uh, hang out. This is the hostel, by the way, guys. Local hostel. <laughs> Look. See, I told you guys. By the way, speaking of this, you know, this is. This is from our regular viewers, all right? I, those are not the locals that are telling everybody to be quiet. Those are white people moving down here telling everybody to be quiet. You know what? Don't be, for the locals out here, don't be quiet. Just to keep making noise. If it's too loud for the gringos, tell them to get out of here. All right? So anyways, back to what we were talking about. Yeah, there's a lot of theories out there. So there's a lot of theories out there, you know, that are literally saying right now that, you know, um, Julian Assange is in good hands and, uh, why is he in good hands? Well, because uh, President Trump needs him, because uh, the other, you know, the agenda needs him. They need him to testify. That's the word I was looking for. They need him to testify, um, you know, the whole WikiLeaks thing and a bunch of other shit. So, by the way, look, you see this place right here? My girl, my girl helped uh, design a bunch of murals. You see all that shit that there's painted right there? I'm not gonna go in there now. I'm talking about Julian Assange. Again, this is just for my regular viewers. I don't know. This is probably not gonna get. This video is probably not gonna blow up. It's probably just gonna be a regular video. It's just an update. Um, but yeah, you know, the point is, is that you know, there's a lot of theories out there. We don't know what the hell's happening. You know, there's so much insane, crazy shit happening on a regular, everyday basis when it comes to all this. 
that we don't fucking know anymore. Um, everyone, every single person out there um, doesn't believe anything anymore. You know, just like when I was watching uh, or listening to Joe Rogan the other day, and he had Graham Hancock on there, and they were talking about, you know, like uh, a- ancient aliens and shit, you know, for lack of a better... You know, ancient alien shit, you know, for lack of a better, you know, a description. And, um, you know, like the guy was saying, you know, the guy, the Graham Hancock was saying is that, you know, the reason that it's so much easier for people to believe his, you know, actual work right now is because nobody believes anybody else anymore. Nobody believes government agencies. Nobody believes um, anyone anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you got to show like really, really, really hardcore truth and evidence and all this other shit or, you know, most likely they're not even going to fucking believe in you and shit. So pretty much basically it right there so and uh yeah i mean so you know right now with what's going on with mr mr assange is the same exact thing it's literally exactly the same thing that you know we don't know we really don't know what's going on i mean if we just go with uh history our own uh history on this situation yeah that's why we're all thinking that they actually got to him they're gonna kill him you know they're using uh the excuse you know that you know he got sick even though they probably poisoned him and uh and all this other stuff in order to get rid of him because they want to get rid of him or that could all be a ploy all that could be literally a lie so that we end up believing um the fact that you know that he um that he's in, uh, what do you call it, that he's in prison, that he's in the hospital, that he's going to die, you know, all this shit, so that, um, you know, we think that that's what's going on, but in reality, he's probably getting medical attention, he's probably being taken care of, you know, they're probably, uh, you know, working him, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, making sure that he's okay, so that he can stand trial, and that he can expose uh, the people he needs to expose, and all that shit, so. I mean, you know, that's basically it right there, I mean, that's, that's the thing where we're at, and, uh, you know, it's very interesting times right now. I mean, honestly, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but, you know, now as I'm seeing this whole thing, you know, starting to develop, not just with Assange, but just with journalism in general, it's making me want to do this even more, you know, meaning talking about topics that I shouldn't be talking about. Because, again, just like um, the reason <laughs> the reason that last week's episode blew up was because nobody was covering that shit. Nobody, literally, nobody knows nobody else covering it. It wasn't until I covered it, and by the way, even after I covered it, it was already out there. Meaning the WikiLeaks had had already released that information days prior to me releasing the info, to me making that video, and yet I was able to to climb all the way to the top because there was nobody else making that fucking video. I mean, which is pretty interesting, and. Um, and then, you know, then the people that were making the video after were people like just like RT and other outlets, you know, out there that are fringe. Um, so who knows? I mean, you know, there's a little bit more uh, Assange coverage now a week later. So who knows? But I mean, again, it's just very interesting that, you know, I, I can make a video on this and it blows up and make a video on other topics and they don't blow up and it's because you know, there's so much other mainstream media, you know, coverage that it just gets lost. It really gets lost. So, you know, it's actually an incentive to me and other small creators out there to really, you know, talk about smaller. Um, and I mean, talk about, you know, uh, subjects like this because no one else is talking about them. So if no one else is talking about them. That means that, you know, you're the only one talking about them. And that means everyone's going to watch and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah. That's the plan there, you know? Like, it's just really, really interesting. And uh, and shout out to everybody out there that's still, you know, watching um, all my new new subscribers. Shout out to all you guys out there. I'm doing a bit of a walk and talk, which is uh, kind of like what we normally do. And so on and so forth. So, yeah. Let me see. Well, I mean, right now I think that it's imperative for all of us for all of us to talk about these things for all of us to keep uh, the conversation open for all of us to continually um, bring this subject up you know when nobody else is talking about it and really you know talk about why this is important again this is the, the this is the end of the first amendment as we know it um, 
you know, I was watching a video the other day from these two guys that live in China, you know, one from America and the other one's from uh, South, uh, South Africa. But, you know, they were living, you know, they were living in, uh, in China for like over 10 years. And, you know, they come back to the States or, you know, um, or, you know, Europe or other places. And they're filled with tons of people. And I'm a little guilty of this too, that are constantly complaining about how horrible you know the US is and how horrible everything is in Europe and how horrible you know, oh my god blah 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 in fact you know we, I'm, we're guilty of this on this channel a lot but you know they quickly reminded us how it is in other parts of the world that yeah it might be shitty as fuck where we are now but it's even it's like seven billion times shittier in China seven billion times shittier in India seven billion times shittier in a lot of Latin America and all this other stuff so you know this is why I like to show off Mexico because it's not that shitty here it's pretty good you know and as, as opposed to other parts of uh, Latin America and shit like that which are fair, uh, fairly obviously not doing so bueno but again I digress the point is that you know they were also saying the fact that oops Hey guys, sorry about that. Crazy ass heat today. Anyway, so like I was saying before I got rudely interrupted by that heat, was that, you know, remember the fact that at the end of the day, you know, shit, might, you know, like again, like they were literally saying in, uh, in the, the China uh, video or whatever, you know, the fact that like, you know, okay, so we complain about like Flint, Michigan and other water problems in other cities in the US. But when uh, you look at like, let's say like the water problem in China, it's like the whole country, it's like 90% polluted. The water, all of it. They're dying, like they have kids with like fucking cancer and mumps and, and like, you know. So it's like a million times worse. But anyways, even for me, it puts shit into perspective. And I was like, you know, you know, again, things aren't so bad, but the point is also, like I learned from, uh, I think, I don't know if it was Jordan Peterson or somebody else, let me see if I can cross this thing. All right, I can do it. Fuck it. All right. You just run across. Fuck it. Hola, como esta? No, si, no, gracias. It's funny because when I do, you know, shit like that, like run across the street when uh, I'm not supposed to, they just automatically all like, like uh, run around me like if I'm a fucking, you know, I'm like I'm a tourist. Like, oh, this guy, obviously not from around here. All right, all right. So hold on. Hold on a second. Sorry, right, sorry, I just had some change on me. Senor? Si. So anyway, so... Yeah, sorry about all that, guys. Uh, what was it? Yeah, so, you know, again, you know, when we complain in our first world countries, you know, about things like freedom of speech, about, um, you know, um, you know liberties of uh you know equal rights or whatever it is that we're talking about look you know those all of those things are one billion percent valid because obviously i wouldn't be making all the content that i make i mean the thing is it's just yeah like i was saying yeah like i remember now the whole jordan peterson thing or i think it was somebody else that said it but the fact is that you know these problems that we have in first world countries are our problems as well you know what i mean like if we don't protect them if we don't stand up for these rights that we had already fought so hard to get aka freedom of speech it took a long ass time for us to get you know that whole freedom of speech thing and all that stuff so and a bunch and a bunch of other rights so right now as these rights are being attacked you know, it is our job to defend them. It is our job to rise up and uh, and talk about these things and figure it out, and um, and perhaps not complain about frivolous, stupid shit that we are so famous for complaining about, and uh, start focusing on these other things. You know, because again, you know, these rights that we have now are rights that in other countries around the world they eventually want to have as well. Um, again, so we had. That's what we have to. You know, stand up for these rights that we are, that our forefathers fought so hard for, and not just this country and other countries to you know to get them back because you know that's why when we see you know we have a the whole thing with Julian Assange or we see you know other problems with other other freedoms that you know are being attacked right now. Um, it, it, you know, we it hurts so bad, but you know we we got to fight back. We got to stand up and we got to do something about it because it's not going to be done for us. Um, again. You know, right now I'm making this video. There's a few of you guys watching it, but who's 
you know, who's really doing anything about Julian, you know, like, and I get, I know, the, I know the answer to that too. It's like, well, what can we possibly do? You know, what can we possibly do? And it's true, there's nothing much we could do. I'm, I'm probably doing as much as anyone else could do out there. And I'm at risk of getting in trouble for making these videos. So, I mean, I, I totally get it, but this is why we have to stand up in numbers and, uh, and just say no to, to these atrocities that are happening. And I think, I think they are happening. You know, as more of these things happen, like with Julian Assange and others, you know, more people are standing up, more people are um, realizing what the hell's going on. Because again, even the mainstream media, even outlets that, you know, literally support um, the status quo, to support the military industrial complex and all these other things, they themselves are also waking up and rising up and all that shit. So, well, with that being said, I think I'm gonna end the video here. So I really, really, really appreciate you guys. You guys are freaking awesome. I wanna give a shout out to all my new viewers out there, every single one of you. All of you guys that, you know, watched my first Julian Assange video. And everyone that's uh, been here, you know, since last week, and everyone that's been here since day one, when I had like zero subscribers and shit. All of you guys, you know, just a big shout out to everybody. Big shout out to all my patrons. Big, I mean, for real, shout out to all my silent patrons, all my non-silent patrons. Everyone out there that supports me in every way humanly possible. Seriously, thank you, thank you. I love you guys to death. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, what else? What else I need to say? Oh yeah, don't forget to please check out my Discord. Hang out in my Discord. Come out to the Discord, um, you know, hang out with us. Um, you know, we have conversations there about all kinds of things all the time. Also, um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, follow me on, on Twitters, um, follow me um, on Mondays and Thursday nights, you know, when we're on DLive, when we're on Twitch, when we're on, uh, where else? A bit tube and all that other shit. And just uh, join me here, where every single freaking day, I make videos. I'm always dropping videos, so don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. Um, and last but not least, don't forget to stay awesome. Thanks again, and I'll smell you later, alligators.